Coming up on today's episode, $850, Mr. Heron can score you a great HDTV. Tuning your room, it's something you do after you get the speakers in place. Hope for resuming your Blu-rays, and yes, we're blind. Oh, we also got the Blu-ray releases for the week of April 27th, 2010. This is HD Nation. Today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace, Gamefly, and Netflix. Welcome to HD Nation. I'm Robert Heron. And I'm Patrick Norton. HD Nation is your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. Blu-ray online satellite cable over the air. If it is in HD, we want it. We do? We do. We always do. <laughs> oh, by the way, Flash, apparently it's not dead. It's not? Elliot Van Busker over at CNET pointed out that it's going to show up on the Ciabas Pop Box and the Boxy Box. And rumor has it Google is working with various cable set-top box manufacturers to port Android to their boxing, the set-top boxes, Neato. so that they will support Flash also. Now, of course, the Popcorn Hour players have an installed base of 50,000 compared to Apple's tens of millions of iPhones, iPods, and iPod Touches and iPads that Steve Jobs is wielding like a club to beat Flash to death. Yeah, tip of the hat to uh, CNET's Elliot Van Busker for pointing all this out. Nice. I actually had Flash crash in a browser the other day. Really? I haven't had that happen in a long time, but... That makes one of us. Kaboom. Yeah, well. Anyway, a company called <laughs> New Sight claims they have a 70-inch... 3D LCD HDTV that doesn't require glasses. It uses the parallax barrier technology. Essentially, it's an extra screen in front of the main screen that provides that independent view for each eye. I really do sense a narrow <laughs> viewing angle on this one. It really, you may sit here. <laughs> it's, it's that, and it's like, ah, if you turn your head a little bit, it goes, this is really more for signage, I would think, than any kind of in-home use, really. And, did, do they list a price for this technology? I don't no price, no. no ship date, no arrival date, no availability information. That's probably a $50,000 TV. I wouldn't be surprised. I gotta give a shout out to our viewer, Robert. Robert's a little concerned. He, apparently he didn't catch up with us basically reading the Samsung <laughs> 3D to HD TV could be hazardous to your health. And I quote, Robert, of course, guess you guys will continue to ignore this hype Trump's health concerns. Look, here's the thing. One, Robert, the first time you pointed this out, you were talking about a Wikipedia entry talking about binocular dysphoria, which is a theory that's never been peer tested, so nobody knows too much about it except apparently four guys inside of a video game manufacturer who killed off a product that never actually shipped, so there was no large-scale evidence. Yes, in theory, in probability, in possibility, some people are going to negatively react to 3D HDTV viewing with the glasses. And you know what? People negatively react, basically people have negative reactions to traveling on boats, traveling <laughs> in airplanes, Dramamine. traveling in cars. It's called motion sickness. We will find out. Now, the idea that binocular dysphoria can lead to permanent loss of the ability to, to, to basically, you know, deal with 3D space because your mind really? sort of resets itself to like the, the faux world? 3D experience. Really? That's one of the, that's, it's, 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 uh, okay, theory says it's possible, but Robert, I want to make sure we've said it to everyone, 3D HCTV may ruin your ability to have depth perception. <laughs> In theory, according to some people on Wikipedia, writing about something that was uncovered and discussed inside of a video game manufacturer a decade or so ago. And it's not me you're talking about, just to be no. clear. The viewer, Robert. Robert. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just to be sure. I thought Anyhow, I was, look. I thought it was being put in my place. I really, really doubt that a lot of people are basically going to start walking into things after viewing H3D you know, HTV. Although, it, at least They're one manufacturer enough. is saying, like, don't put your 3D HTV too close to a bunch of stairs because in case people have depth perception issues, they don't walk down them. I, look, I, it's <laughs> you've been warned, okay? <laughs> there could be an issue. Oh, it, well. It could make you dizzy. Meanwhile, Sony's first 3D HDTV is set to go on sale in June, and props to the folks at Blu-ray.com for posing their first 3D Blu-ray review. Monsters vs. Aliens 3D. We've got a link to it up in the show notes. The disc is currently only available if you buy Samsung's $350 media bundle that also includes two pair of glasses and a Blu-ray player. Decent. Yeah. Decent. <laughs> $850 for an HDTV? It's doable. I think so. Extremely. A uh, person named Jose wrote in looking to add an HDTV for $850 so his quote, so his nephew can play his 360 and stop hogging the living room TV. 
That is a cool uncle. And Uncle Jose, there are some good HDTVs in your price range. I'd first suggest the 40-inch Sony Bravia EX500. It's about $810 online. It has Instaport technology. I believe I called that quick port last week. I meant Instaport. That's the fast switching HDMI tech. So if you have multiple devices connected via HDMI, it'll go from one device to the other very quickly without losing that precious handshake we were talking about last Ooh. week. Also, it has two component video inputs, USB ports, so you can turn it into a giant picture frame or play your music, and a swivel stand, which is pretty good for a TV at that price. Also at 40 inches, I will recommend Toshiba's 40G300U, that's a new 2010 model, also about $800, just under $800, four HDMI ports as well, one component video input, USB for music and pictures as well, and an Ethernet port for DLNA goodness. They really don't mm. highlight that much on their website, but if so you, you dig into the manual, content in there. it's there and you can stream it. It actually supports pictures, music, and MPEG-2 video. So, And if you can push the budget a little bit, you can go a couple inches larger, the 42 inch two more inches of screen, the LG 42 LD520. That's about $880 online. Slightly bigger screen than again, it's also slightly above the budget you stated. It also has a swivel stand, three HDMI ports, uh, one on the side, one component video input, USB for pictures and music. The great Picture Wizard 2 feature that LG is putting in a lot of their new TVs, so you can use a nice on-screen menu to do all your basic setup uh, for things like contrast, color, tent, things like that. It's a great, great tool. Also has a headphone output, so if you're That's looking good for to the gaming. keep there. Now, <laughs> all the TVs I just mentioned, they're all 1080p screen resolution. They all provide 120 hertz tech, so they should be decent for gaming. And also, they include VGA input, so if you want to connect your PC with that old analog cable, you can do that as well. <laughs> and they're all very energy efficient. These are all CFL backlit LCDs. None of these are LED backlit, but they're all... They're incredibly efficient. And then they'll all use, uh, actually LG and Sony claim that in its standby mode, they're consuming less than 0.3 watts. That used to be a, used to be one watt standby. Now it's 0.3 or even 0.1 watts in some cases. So that's some, pretty funny. Some pretty good options out there. Crave just did a write up. CNET's uh, gadget blog just did a write up, basically talking about how the instant on features in Blu-ray players may rape your energy bills. And it turns out it takes it for if you have the instant on, basically yeah. it has it at a higher power level state. Totally. So they're they're estimating your annual bill for running your Blu-ray player will go from a dollar a year if it's completely off to seven dollars a year if you're yes. using instant on. So if the you're on a tight budget, guy is falling. Turn that uh, Blu-ray player all the way off. Good, good title writing, though, on that one. Hey, let's thank one of our sponsors, Squarespace.com. This is a place to create a website that looks beautiful, that has high levels of functionality. You build a blog, you build a store, you build a portfolio. Whatever you want to build, you do it without writing code. No coding is required. It's a publishing system for everyone. It's publishing and hosting. The tools are there to do cool stuff. I can't code my way out of a box, but my wife, who can code her way out of a box, quite nicely, thank you, was actually pretty impressed with how easy the tools were to use. It's also easy to move over your existing site. You can basically click a button and bring over WordPress, Blogger, TypePad, Movable Type, just import them right away, including your posts, your comments, your tags, your authors, and your media. What's really, really, really nice if you're kind of a serious website builder, it'll actually take the URL structure of your existing site and create mappings across for every single one of your old posts automatically so all the links will still work. That's pretty slick. If you've ever actually had to migrate a website, making sure everything actually links can be a nightmare. And we can score you a discount. It doesn't happen when you first check out the website. You go to squarespace.com, you sign up, you get about two weeks, and then they're gonna say, pull out your credit card, please. And when you do, use the code HDNation. That's gonna score you 10% off in the lifetime of your order, which is a pretty good deal if you keep a website running for years at a time. Do us a favor, folks. Support HDNation by supporting our sponsors like squarespace.com. Last week I mentioned watching Formula One racing in high def, and many of you rightly pointed out that it is not, in fact, being broadcast in high def, yet. The head <laughs> of the BBC HD recently wrote on her blog that, quote, the events being are being filmed in HD as far as we know, but they are not made available by F1 to the broadcasters in HD, oh. unquote. Now, the Tricky. rumor has it that 2011 season will be broadcast in HD, so I cannot wait for that. And thanks to Eric and Ken for setting me straight on that. 
It's interesting. I actually have to go back and check to see if DirecTV is added to the BBC because the Dish Network, in the ongoing battle, the legal battle, the ad marketing battle between DirecTV and the Dish Network, is Dish's latest claim that we have 200 channels of HD TV goodness. Of course, like 57 of them are video on demand channels. Oh. But I now I got to go now check to see if BBC America is in HD. Uh, finally, because a couple weeks ago when I mentioned that Versus is no longer on DirecTV, it isn't true anymore. Last August, if you didn't hear the story, DirecTV pulled Versus from the lineup because they were in contract negotiating battles with Comcast. But apparently I haven't been paying close enough attention because as of March 15th, they reached an agreement just in time for the Stanley Cup, I think, and Versus is back. And it's basically included in the same programming yeah. packages as it was before at the end of August 2009. Thanks to Jay Eric and Eric for with a K for pointing that one out, which means I can get my professional bull riding back on and my NHL, if only for the last few games. World extreme cage fighting. And quite a bit more. Yes. <laughs> it's a very... Uh, <laughs> Testosterone-laden channel. Oh. It goes well with my chick flick movie tendencies. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we discuss the new Blu-ray releases for the week of April 27, 2010? It's time. Yes. Dune, David Lynch's 1984 lightly twisted take on the classic sci-fi novel, not that 2000 three-part miniseries that aired on sci-fi, has an excellent transfer. It's probably the same one used on the HD DVD that came out in 2006, but if you want to savor the ridiculous level of detail Lynch stuffed into every frame, you will love this disc. Tombstone? Woo! Patrick, do you have anything to say about Herr Tombstone? Yes, if it's not the theatrical release, because they did a horrible extended edition on DVD, which I, of course, own because I'm a Tombstone fan, I will weep. Rumor has the soundtrack is, basically the soundtrack is supposed to sound gorgeous, DTS Dolby 5.1 transfer, and a solid, you know, this was a pretty workmanlike movie. It wasn't like they were using the expensive film for that one, but, okay. but uh, yeah, actually I have a lot to say. I'm excited about it. It's supposed to look really, really good. Mm. I should also point out, it's complicated. Not my favorite Meryl Streep movie. <laughs> I loved her in Mamma Mia and The Devil Wears Prada, uh. and her Julia Child was epic in Julia and Julia, but if the older folks are looking for a good date night movie, for example, my wife, huge Meryl Streep fan, hey, this one's got Alec Baldwin, Meryl Streep, and Steve Martin. It's not subtle, but the three of these, they're just they are just fun to watch. You probably are a big fan of Alec Baldwin. I, that, Devil Wears Prada, I gotta say, I got that's suckered into watching movie. that while I was hungover one day in a hotel room in Vegas, and that's good watch. You liked it. I did, you I will it. admit it, it was a good movie. <laughs> Continuing on, Armageddon, He'll never admit it, but Patrick's excited about this one, too. I am. <laughs> and early reports are that it's a good transfer, though. High Def Digest's Michael Palmer points out that some slightly dated effects and use of stock footage, hello, Air Force One, kept it from being a five-star transfer. Other releases this week include The Jackal, Traffic, Ooh. The Buddha from PBS, Disgrace, District 13, Ultimatum, which is being released by itself or combined with its sequel, District B-13, Five Minutes of Heaven, Elizabeth. Eye candy. Elizabeth the Golden Age. More eye candy. <laughs> the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, oh. Out of Africa, and the Criterion Collection's Ride with the Devil. It's time to thank one of our sponsors, Netflix. With more than 12 million members, Netflix is the world's largest subscription service, streaming movies and TV episodes over the internet and sending DVDs by mail. This week, Netflix is sending me the 1985 Orwellian fantasy and cult classic, Brazil. I hope it's the Criterion version and not some 4x3 letterbox monstrosity. For $8.99 a month, Netflix members can instantly watch unlimited TV episodes and movies streamed to their TVs and computers and can receive unlimited DVDs delivered quickly to their homes. With Netflix, there are never any due dates or late fees. Members can select from a growing library of titles that can be watched instantly and a vast array of titles on DVD. Among the large and expanding base of devices that can stream movies and TV episodes from Netflix right to members' TVs are Microsoft's Xbox 360, Sony's PS3, and Nintendo's Wii console. Find movies you love easily. You can browse, search, or see Netflix recommendations for you. They even have a special back-of-box feature that lets you get the details on any movie instantly. As a Netflix Unlimited member, you get Blu-ray movies by mail in about one business day. Shipping is free, and there are no late fees or due dates. Blu-ray plans start at just $5.99 a month. As a new member and HD Nation viewer, you can get a free trial membership. Go to www.netflix.com slash hdnation and sign up now. Be sure to use this URL so that they know we sent you. 
We've got a question about perfecting your audio install from Ben. Hi, Ben. Yeah. Robert and Patrick. That's us. I recently added a Pioneer Elite VSX 23TXH AV receiver and the Mod 1 Plus Home Theater Ooh. from Orb Audio to my home theater. I watched the helpful surround sound speaker placement episode, but now I'm wondering how to go about calibrating my system for optimal audio. I performed the basic sound configuration with the included microphone, and it did a good job of detecting speaker distances and adjusting the dB levels. I'd like to take it to the next level of tweakage so that I can maximize the sound for my new system, and I'm unsure where to go from here. Thanks, guys, and keep up the good work. Signed, Ben. And Mark from Industry California has a related question. He says, I'll be moving into a newer home in a couple of months. My new home has hardwood floors, which I really like. The new living room is about 14 by 18 and has two large windows on the side of the room. Any idea how bad this will affect my home theater and music sound? Someone on AVS forum said it will only affect the high frequencies. If this is a huge problem, should I go ahead and install carpet? Any tips would be appreciated, Mark. In industry. Let's talk about Mark's question first. Okay. Okay. Yes, with a hardwood floor and lots of glass in the wall, you're going to have a bright room. Is there lots of slap echo? This is really easy to basically, you walk into a room and you go, and you listen. Clap your hands together and listen. There's a difference between a bright room, that's one with a lot of hard surfaces and the sound bounces, and a dull room, that's where you clap and basically the sound stops immediately. You don't want a room with no echoes. Anoechoic chambers are great for measuring audio, but they're horrible to listen in. And you don't necessarily want to think like, well, I was in this big empty audio tour, like auditorium and I clapped my hands and I heard all this sharp noise. That's because auditoriums get filled with people which actually act as acoustical dampeners. Just do yourself a favor. Do this after the furniture is in. It's amazing what a couch and chairs and curtains and books or posters on the walls can do. A super bright echoey room though, for example, your living room with no furniture and a hardwood floor will muddy conversations off the, the, the surround sound and it'll be fatiguing to listen to because it'll be very bright, very sharp. The, it will mostly, the glass and the wood floor will emphasize the high end. Um, for example, this studio was about impossible to record until we modified it so it didn't reflect as much audio. I would wait on the carpet. I got a buddy that sells boats for a living. He says, look, you sail it first, you find the problems, then you start fixing it because there's nothing worse than spending thousands of dollars of rearranging things and finding out that your ideas, which you didn't test first, sucked. You might actually like the way the room sounds. I would say get curtains for the windows. It'll block the ambient light. It'll absorb reflected audio. And, you know, you could actually, you know, hang up a rug if it's there's too much brightness in the room. Even hanging pictures on the wall will yeah. change the characteristics of a room, especially if you've got large flat surfaces. Even if there's a picture frame sticking out an inch and you hang a few of those pictures up, it, depending on what your art situation is for the room itself, like you said, that could change a lot of the room acoustics. So I, I take that advice to heart. Wait until everything's installed and set up the way you want it and then yeah. see how it sounds. Get your speakers set up first. It's amazing what you can also figure out by nailing some cheap blankets to the wall. If, well, if you're, excuse who's me. Gonna, who's going to put up with that? <laughs> I don't want to cheap blankets. Well, it's temporary, right? Oh, but, true. Okay. Because if you're sitting there like, oh my goodness, this room is driving me insane. Like, f you know, get some duct tape, get a couple nails, nail a blanket up and experiment with the location. All right, I'm a freak of nature, <laughs> but that is a cheap way to experiment with a room. And before I forget, I'm told putting acoustical dampening material on the ceiling can make up for those really hard floors if it turns out the floor is, you know, basically driving you insane. Also, getting out the Persian rugs, you know, something cheap from Ikea. There's a lot of things you can do to keep those beautiful wood floors in place and have decent audio. That brings us back to Ben. Ben, what you really want to do is dial in your speaker and subwoofer locations first, then start thinking about tuning the room. If you have the money, have it done by an acoustician. Everything I've ever read online about a guy named Bob Hodas pretty much says, this guy came in and he made everything sound amazing. And Mr. Hodas does that because he's experienced and because he has sophisticated tools that he uses to well-tune rooms at places like Abbey Road and Lucasfilm. These people have high standards. What you want is the local version and you want the kind of computer analysis that Hodas does that basically verifies that the sound from the speakers is getting to where you sit at the same time or within like 20 or 30 milliseconds, which according to your head is the same time. Um, HOTUS created uh, source independent measurement. It's, it's a type of software that analyzes how your speakers and your room interacts. Then he'll sit around and basically like use lasers and mirrors to adjust the angles on the speaker placement. He'll work on subwoofer placement. And if you've got one, he'll adjust the equalizer or the subwoofer cutoff to really actually, he'll look at the way the, the sound looks He'll analyze the sound and then basically adjust everything and suggest room tuning ideas. 
That said, you know, I don't know what that would cost. <laughs> I'm sure Mr. Hodas would be pretty expensive. <laughs> I mean, at the very least, uh, subwoofer placement and speaker yeah. placement are really critical. And it sounds like he did all the basics, at least aiming the speakers at the listening position. Manipulating where you put that subwoofer, though, has arguably one of the most drastic effects. And that's, that's something it doesn't cost any money to do. It's just a matter of, yeah. loading, if possible, I for would the room do that doing. first. Yeah. The subwoofer hack, right? Totally. Which is basically take your subwoofer and put it in front of where you would sit. Now start walking around the room. And eventually there'll be a spot where this, the, the bass coming from your subwoofer sounds louder. The idea you want to have one long, low, like 10, 20 hertz tone coming out of your subwoofer. You put the subwoofer where your feet would be when you sit. You walk around the room till you find the spot where the subwoofer sounds loudest, then you locate the subwoofer there permanently, and then you start tweaking around. You know, it's amazing sometimes what a few inches will do for the sound of a set of speakers, especially for stereo imaging, you know, and basically actually really nailing the angle of the speakers to, you know, your, your ideal seated position. Totally, and it might maybe just moot point anyway, but go back through the manual for the AVR that you own and make sure that you've got everything set up properly there as well. Large and small speaker settings in particular are the ones to look for, and any other related sound processing settings. Uh, make sure you're running as clean of an audio performance as you can get from whatever source device you're listening to. Mm -hmm. If it's a Dolby digital encode or a DTS encode, make sure it's just raw right into your test equipment or into your, into your AVR and then out to your ears the way it should be presented and not put through some kind of crazy like kitchen sink sound effect or something like that or, or the bathroom or, or the symphony Or the Carnegie hall, Halls. Or, yeah, the hall one's the worst. <laughs> oh, those are oil. Yeah, basically like you start, you know, start with your subwoofer, get to the point where you have a nice, beautiful, big image coming from your music and from your surround sound. From, you know, pick one of the discs like Kung Fu, like Kung Fu Panda or Master and Commander, one of those and start like really making it fill out. Then you can start playing around with like, you know, moving furniture around or hanging like, you know, go to Ikea, get a kill him or however you say that word. <laughs> Hang it on the wall. It's art. And it also is acoustically dampening because when you start playing around with like, look at Realtraps.com and, and uh, Michael Green is audio, uh, does room tunes because you can spend a lot of money playing around with your room. And there's some people that argue that these are really effective for smaller rooms because 14 by 18 really isn't that big or they're only really good for bigger rooms or they don't really work at the low end because you need a huge trap to trap the low end. Start simple, start with your speaker placement, then start tweaking the room. Sounds like good advice. Yeah. Stay a moment to thank one of our sponsors, Gamefly, the largest online video game rental service. Here's the deal. They want you to find good games and not get ripped off. So it's $15.95 a month. You get to choose from over 7,000 new and classic titles from pretty much all consoles and handhelds. You get to keep it for as long as you like. Play it until your fingers bleed. Actually, I don't really recommend that, but if you're into that kind of thing, uh, make sure you're over 18 and, and don't sue me. There's no late fees, no due dates. Shipping is always free. When you're done, send it back. Gamefly is going to send you the next available game on your list. If you really, really like the game, Click Keep It, Gamefly will basically sell it to you at a discounted price, send you the manuals and the box free of charge. Now, you can score a free two-week trial if you're an HD Nation fan. Well, or pretty much anyone can score a free two-week trial. Go to Gamefly.com slash HD Nation. Some restrictions do apply. See the site for details. Do us a favor. Support HD Nation by supporting our sponsors like Gamefly. Hey, last week we talked about the resume function on Blu-ray discs, <laughs> or more accurately, the uh, Blu-ray's lack of returning to where you left off if you stop the playback. Mm -hmm. Now, a source deep within the Blu-ray production community sent us an email and asked that we keep his name, I think it's a he, or off her. the air, or her. Their name. They wrote, if a disc is authored in HDMV, non-Java, most players are able to resume from the last position played. <laughs> this is especially true on most Samsung players that they can hold several discs of information in their persistent storage memory. Panasonic, PlayStation 3, and some Sony players can also resume from these discs, but only the last disc that was played. Mm. Now, the Java-based Blu-ray disc menus generally aren't authored to hold any information that allows you to resume. However, on the Informant and Nightmare on Elm Street, there is a special resume menu that some players can see. The PlayStation 3 and a few other players can allow these discs to write to the persistent storage. If there is data in this memory, a menu will pop up when you hit the play movie button on the menu asking if you want to resume from the last position played. This feature is not commonplace yet, but if more people say they want it, I'm sure it will be. We want it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want easier functionality for all those concerned when it comes to my Blu-ray. Mm. Most definitely. And a resume function would be kind of nice. Especially when you have the toddler interrupt program. You mm. know, we were just talking about this very thing, I think, a couple shows ago. Well, of course we were. But I fired up a movie over the weekend. I think it was the new, well, not the new, but it was the final 
version of Blade Runner. And when I paused it and came back later, it actually resumed. And I was like, uh, I found a disc that that works on. And it, <laughs> it, I had to then hit stop a couple of times and go back to the beginning, but that's it. It it's a minor inconvenience. There's a lot going on there. <laughs> Fahad in Toronto writes in, do the best CRT HDTV still provide superior picture quality over the best plasma and LCD HDTVs? Many thanks. Love the show. Keep up the great work. Fahad, thank you so much. But CRTs are dead. <laughs> Yeah, they're there's, gone. There's still a bunch of studio quality monitors that are probably still in use, but yeah, yeah. and there are still manufacturers out yeah. there. But you you can go yeah. to, to big box stores and occasionally stumble across an actual like 2024 20, in CRT. I haven't seen a CRT HD TV though in a long time. Yeah, because so. for all intents and purposes, the, what's what's killing them off faster than anything else. It's a simple fact that you have a container, because almost, all, they're, well, almost not all, all of these are made overseas, and you can pack like 20, you know, CRTs in a container, or like 50 <laughs> HDTVs, and the HDTVs weigh less than a CRT of a comparable size. CRTs are dead. And I would also say straight up, for straight up picture performance though, yes, some of the new display technologies do match the quality of today's CRTs in terms of contrast performance in particular, because mm -hmm. you can get really dark blacks on a CRT, but with some of the new LCDs and some of the new plasmas, of course, you're hitting that same same performance point. Yeah. And if you're talking about picture brightness, there's just no comparing what a CRT can do compared to like a modern LCD, uh, four or five times brighter, at least. So so if if you can find, if basically if you need to watch HDTV outdoors, and you can find a CRT HDTV, that might be the way to go, is that what you're saying? That's where CRT still wins, if you can I, actually no, find I, one for point, sale? I wouldn't bother, no. Okay. <laughs> They're good. They're dead. They're as dead as rear projection TVs. Uh, but there's still, you can actually still buy some, it's, it's easy to buy a rear projection TV. There's that one company hanging in there. Yeah. Bless them. <laughs> hey, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode of HD Nation. As always, we want to know what you think. So send your comments, questions, or suggestions to hdnation at revision3.com. You can also catch us on Facebook. We've got a Facebook page. Wicked cool. We don't have access to I'm it. I'm not friending any one of you. <laughs> we'll friend all you facebook.com slash hdnation or on twitter follow us on twitter twitter.com slash hdnation or hang out with the other viewers in the hdnation forums at revision3.com slash forum and you can find links well we put the links in the show notes which are at the bottom of the page if you go to you know basically hdnation.tv it comes to a web page click on the show the links are at yeah. the bottom of that page you'll also find all the links to subscribe to the show so if you're not getting the latest episode of hdnation <laughs> delivered to your doorstep what are you waiting for that's right people subscribe Subscribe and watch and do us a favor, tell your friends. Until hey, next time. Thank you for watching. I'm Robert Aaron. And I'm Patrick Norton. We'll see you next week.